The Expansion Zone with Sonia Barrett. Everybody's talking about consciousness. Everybody wants that eternal kiss. Yeah, everyone's saying there's more than this. Everyone wants to follow their own bliss. Talk about one love, one blood. On the Expansion Zone, we examine life and our quest to understand who and what we are and of the vastness of human potentials. We explore the making of our world from quantum physics to parapsychology, health, sociology and philosophy along with practical living. You are reminded of the possibilities in creating personal change. So for an hour, we'll stimulate and expand the mind. Well, welcome once again to another edition of The Expansion Zone with Sonia Barrett. I'm, of course, your host, Sonia Barrett. And great Monday to you. And uh, I want to thank you for always joining me my faithful listeners. And of course, I want to thank Donna Delory for our intro music, Be the Change. Everybody loves that song. Well, normally, you know, I give you a quote for the day. So I'm going to make the quote for today, Be the Change. All right. So what does that really mean? You know, we hear it all the time. Well, Be the Change. What are we up against when we talk about Be the Change? So I, I want to just touch on that a little bit right after I let you know what the topic is for the day and who we're going to be speaking with for the day. We'll talk about what is, you know, what does that really mean? What does that look like? Uh, well, the topic for today is the power of freedom from food during this unrest. Now, the topic may change somewhat, but we're going to be talking about all of that anyway, because I think that's really important for us to discuss. Now, who better to discuss this with but our guest today, who is Patricia Bish, author of Freedom from Food, A Quantum Weight Loss Approach. And she is here to really inform us how to get through this. So, all right. So I mentioned before be the change and the idea of being the change. And, you know, we're kind of so used to saying things, you know, it's sort of topical, oh, be the change you want to see in the world. We, we say these things all the time and then we go off and we do something else. So I took this excerpt from uh, an article actually from Forbes titled The Science of Change, Getting Beyond Mere Grit and Willpower. And this was by Elizabeth Harris. And uh, it, it, it's not very long, but eh, it's a f quite, quite a few lines here. But critical steps, this is, of course, to be in the change. Critical steps include developing healthy alternatives, rearranging your environment to help rather than hurt, uh, cultivating healthy relationships, and planning contingency rewards, whatever that, that may be. Willpower, as most people think about it, is essential but not sufficient for change. Uh, Norcross says, what more, what's more, we wouldn't rely on willpower to muscle our way through almost any other learned activity we pursue. Can you just will yourself to play the piano or calculus, um, bacon and apple pie? Well, sure. One needs the motivation, one needs the perseverance to be sure, but there are skills involved in all this, and that's what most people miss. That's what he said. In fact, our studies show repeatedly 
um, that pe people who over rely on willpower to the exclusion of everything else actually fail at much higher rates. Willpower is necessary. It gets you started, but it's not the actual skill. So interestingly enough, we're going to talk today with Patricia Bish because in a way, yes, we're going to look at is it will, willpower and at the same time, are we developing a skill? I mean, you know, how many things are really about developing a skill when we're changing a habit, when we're changing patterns, when we're changing thought process? There's so many different levels of changing going on. And I think to some degree, yes, there is willpower, but then it could be, you know, willpower towards honing in on a, on, on a skill to the point where it becomes part of us. It becomes our normal. So I think it's going to be a great conversation today. And all right. So a little bit about Patricia. Um, Freedom from Food presents. This is her book. You know, she's the author of this book. But Freedom from Food presents a revolutionary program designed by Patricia Bish, who discovered the secret to regaining her power over food without deprivation. Built on the solid foundation foundation of quantum physics, which sub substantiates how the mind affects the body. It provides practical applications of principles that guide you to making your consciousness strong enough to transform your body. Patricia Bish, M-A-M-F-T, lived the painful life of an overeater, an overeater from her teen years to well into her uh, early adulthood. Then over 30 years ago, she discovered the secret to regaining her power over food, not through deprivation, but as a way to enjoy eating and to lose weight anyway. So Patricia Bish maintains a private practice in psychotherapy, specializing in EMDR therapy. Patricia lectures, conducts media appearances, and leads classes and workshops on weight loss. Freedomfromfood.com is the website. And her work is amazing. So, Patricia Bish, welcome once again. I'm so excited to be chatting with you again, Mrs. Awesome Lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an honor to be here, and I always love joining our consciousness together because we always quantum leap into <laughs> another expansion zone as we speak. So, thank you for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I am thrilled to have you here because we are in a crucial time right now where, um, you know, people are looking for comfort. Um, and due to the what, what I call the absolute, you know, disturbance to our normal, uh, our normal routines, uh, food seems to be an even bigger substitute for pacifying the absence of our normal. So uh, what can, you know, where would you like to dive in in that sense? Because this is, this is layers deep in terms of this, you know, pacification, this process that we go through with, with using food as our blanket to, to make ourselves feel good. Well, I'm excited about that uh, question because uh, the COVID and these times of unrest have really opened up a new aspect for me of food and eating. Um, I want to start by saying first about the unrest, because uh, what became clear to me during these times and with the people I work with is that loneliness is really comes up. Um, the separation, the um, feeling unloved, um, the duality in our world, the, the us and them, the separation, all the things uh, um, that caused us to eat in the first place have a great opportunity to arise in us. So there we are alone. And uh, I did a little video on this and I said, well, if you're anything like me, which I do think all eaters have something in common because we have 
a wound that we covered over or we sedated with food. So here I am 40 years later and I'm asking myself, okay, I no longer gain weight from food. No matter what I eat, no matter when I eat it, no matter how much I eat, I don't gain weight from food because of the quantum understanding that I got all those years ago and was able to transmute the food I ate, um, not to make me gain weight, but to see it as an energy source uh, that my mind directed. So in working with people all this time, you would think I had all the answers. And that's what I want to talk about because uh, some lightning bolts went off to me uh, in this time. And that major lightning bolt is about uh, the wound and where it all started. So here I am, I don't gain weight from food anymore. And yet I'm sitting in my room um, at, at times daily, I was sitting in my room eating a pint of ice cream or a half a pint of ice cream. And finally, I'm saying to myself, wait a minute. Okay, so I don't gain weight from food, but I am emotionally eating. What is going on? And um, what finally I began to understand was that there was a part of us when the food first, first became an issue that, uh, that actually triggered our nervous system uh, to such a degree. We either felt enough fear, uh, we didn't feel safe enough, we didn't feel uh, protected enough, um, we didn't feel loved enough. There was some anxiety that happened what I didn't realize why I was reaching for this pint of ice cream was that at that time, we have a protective mechanism. That protective mechanism in children and in adults creates a traumatic trauma response where we go unconscious. So here I am, a 35, 40 year therapist who has really looked at myself and I still am eating this pint of ice cream. And I thought, what is it? What happened then? And, uh, and what I am now aware of, and I uh, want to write an article about this, is that I went unconscious, um, as does everybody during trauma. So as much as I've investigated over all these years, there is a part, unconscious means you don't remember. So it's like when you have surgery, you know, they put you out, you know, they give you that substance. What's it called? Pro, propa, something like propa. Yeah, something. Something like propical. <laughs> anyway, I didn't remember when I was wheeled in for surgery. I didn't remember being wheeled out. It was over. That's unconscious. You do not remember the event. So there is a new honoring of this part of us that is eating, that's happened. So the honoring has to do is that we go unconscious. It's too uncomfortable for us to remember. Our nervous system is too overwhelmed, too fearful. Um, maybe it's a rage coming at us. Maybe it was abuse. Whatever it was, it was too much. And we need to honor that it went unconscious and it wasn't safe for us. So as I began to honor this, I said, okay, I can tell you about my childhood, but that doesn't really mean that I have all the pieces in the puzzle as to um, the intensity, the amount, the uh, volatileness that happened that caused my nervous system to shut down and to split off 
from my divinity, my natural flow, uh, my essential state. So this new understanding has helped me. Here's the thing. What, what you're talking about is a crucial part to be understood because even if there's somebody that naturally doesn't gain weight, I mean, it, it's not just about the whether we gain weight or not gain weight. And that's what you're, you're sharing right now. Um, but there is something in us that we're feeding, you know, at different times. In, in different situations, and you're talking about trauma. I don't think that a lot of people are looking at it right now, but we're, we've all been traumatized um, in some way. We're seeing something that we've never seen before, particularly those that are older. The children, when you're that little, sadly, it become, this is in a way a norm. For the rest of us that have been around for a while on this planet, we're just totally like, what just was what, happening? What, what just happened? So there is the, definitely a great deal of trauma. So I'm glad that you're pointing these things out because we like blankets. We like pacifiers. We like to find things too, to comfort ourselves. Exactly. We do. And what happens as a child or whenever that trauma hit us was that we had to go, we had to put kind of our purity you know, the purity of a child, the vulnerability of ourselves, the sensitivity, it had to go, let's say, into another room. I saw this with a little girl I was dealing with. She said, I'm taking all my fancy stuff and I'm putting it in a room and no one will know that that room is that is hidden. They won't know where it is. I'm not going to tell them about it. And she was a very young little girl. And she said, because I'm afraid I'll hurt their feelings and lose the love that I have, however little it was, however uh, inadequate it was, I'm afraid to speak up. So I'm not going to speak up. I'm not going to tell the truth that I really don't like certain things. I'm just going to hide that part of myself and then you develop the personality and the personality self, which is a false self. It's not that pure divine self learns how to be a good girl, learns how not to make trouble. So it can keep the little bit of love, however odd it is or however not satisfying it is where we don't feel valued or mirrored or loved. We, um, we still need something. And so we develop a personality that will keep some of it intact. So all of this, I think I'm saying a lot, is, um, is what gets triggered now, especially in the unrest. It triggers this wounded self. And we want to get rid of this wounded self. Heal me. Take it away. Get rid of Anything. it. Anything. <laughs> make it go away. <laughs> Just make it go away. So we eat it away. But unfortunately, our nervous system and wants to, I guess you should say fortunately, we have a part of ourselves just like our bodies, which is what I teach with the quantum uh information that wants to heal itself. And because it wants to heal itself, we keep that triggering keeps going on. So we feel lonely. A lot of people 10 o'clock at night, they reach for the ice cream, the candy, that whatever it is, because it's unbearable. Well, we have to realize that this unbearableness is not something to get rid of, but actually a wisdom guide to us to begin to uncover just what that unconscious part was. We can't know that unconscious part altogether because that's why the word unconscious is there. But we can get clues and we can help bring that hurt part um, by giving it more space, maybe holding off uh, uh, from eating even one minute, maybe five minutes, giving that part 
that is having so much trouble, especially in these times of unrest and feeling unloved, giving it like five minutes or even a minute, like I said, that's a lot to go, wow, you're really uncomfortable. Yeah, to be present, to be, to, it's like you're being present to the actual um, core reasoning that's there as opposed to overriding it to some degree with, um, you know, with something else. Yeah, just so we don't have to feel it. That's right. We don't realize what the eater doesn't realize, which I now realize, is the amount we want to do away with it, which is the amount I'm desperate to go eat. I'm uncomfortable. Just give me the food. Let me have something that I love. Let me have something that fills me. I'm tired of taking care of others. I'm tired of never getting my needs met. I'm, 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 I'm tired. I'm going to give myself something that I want right now. And I want ice cream or if it's candy or it's better and better, who knows what it is. But um, at that moment, we have an opportunity. And that's what this period of unrest is actually forcing us into because it's so hard. So we have- You're forced to be with yourself. And that's it. Can, yeah. You said it. We're forced to be with ourselves, And we can't just go out and numb ourselves with activity, with other people, with food. So it's an opportunity to say, okay, I can't get rid of you. Uh, maybe, maybe you have something to teach me. Maybe I need to find out about you. You know, this part that went unconscious that we all think we know just because I say I had a terrible childhood in certain ways. That doesn't mean we know the extent or the intensity that we went through at that time. We went unconscious for a really good reason. So we have to put that very gently back in place and find clues. We do that by giving it more space. Mm -hmm. That makes absolute sense, though. Makes absolute sense because we are um, typically so used to reaching for something else. And if it's not that with the food, there are people that will go, you know what? I think I'm going to go shopping. I think I'm going to go buy some things or I think I'm going to get on the computer and I'm just going to buy, you know. So we are used to finding a way. I know for me, when I sit uh, in the evenings after a long, um, after a day of giving out, I... <laughs> I like to I like to crunch. I like something to crunch. I'm like this cruncher, you know. So I like to 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 sit. And there's nothing better than having for me something that I'm getting pieces off. I don't necessarily. I'm not like a this an ice cream person per se. But I like when I can just keep reaching in for something that I keep eating. So, um, so I think it's interesting to to see the various ways that we are all operating. And I think it's like you're saying, Patricia, if we can just in that moment just own that and allow the discomfort of seeing, you know, I mean, what happened? What what would you say then? Patricia happens when we can stop and take that moment to allow that discomfort to present itself. What do we then have the opportunity to have happen to us at, at that moment? What kind of freedom are we potentially allowing uh, to happen? Yeah. So the freedom that we're allowing um, is for this part, for the clues to come back uh, the wisdom of to come back in as we presence it, we give our nervous system more chance to heal this trauma. And it's not going to happen overnight. Matter of fact, it may not happen. It, it's going to take maybe a lifetime to, we don't need to heal at all to heal our weight, but we we don't. I mean, like I told you, and it's why I told you, I'm still becoming aware of uh, 
that wound. And that's okay. It's a part of myself that's connected to my essence. Uh, so it's stages. It's stages. Mm-hmm. I would be uh, enlightened right now, as they say. <laughs> oh, well, you're not? <laughs> I would totally love myself completely in every way. No, I'm I'm not. I may have healed myself from gaining weight, but that doesn't mean I'm still not on the journey to heal the wound. So we need courage. We need courage. We need compassion for this part. It was a part that was too vulnerable, too scared. It 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 was like um, when you put too much vo- much voltage in something and it shuts down. You know, uh, th- I never thought of it, but it's like a circuit breaker. That's really mm-hmm. a good yeah, overload. Mm-hmm. It's overload. Mm-hmm. And we have a natural part of our nervous system that when it overloads, it takes it and it goes unconscious. Like I said, with that little girl into a room and says, OK, we can't do that anymore. So we have a chance to discover that purity, that little girl or boy, whatever it was, it was, it just got too much for that needed a mom to protect it, needed a dad to guide it or protect it or to be held um, and didn't get it. And, you know, we're such good little survivors. So we, we try to survive and we do that with a personality that figures out how we can get some love. Um, you know, maybe it's by taking care of our parents or how we can control our, get more control over our environment and try not to do wrong where love will be taken away, you know, try and be good girls or try and rebel. Some people rebel. They do, Everybody has, their way of handling this cutoff. But what I missed was that something had disconnected. It's kind of like a a split off that I now, and I, I kept asking myself, why is it when I'm teaching people um, and they learn how to eat whatever they want and not gain weight and hold a consciousness, why can't they hold it? Why are they not holding on to it? It's like a miracle. You know, they see that it's, um, they see in the quantum world that uh, they can change how their body processes food and they're successful, but then they can't hold on to it. And I go, well, why can't they hold on to it? And it's because this part is too anxious inside. So hand in hand with the quantum understanding, that's why I do consultations or tell people, you know, get support because this part, um, this part needs to be healed enough, obviously not completely because who's healed completely, but needs to be healed enough that, um, It doesn't need the weight to protect them as you know, it it, it can let the food come in and go out. So, you know, in my process, people learn how to eat, um, eat food and with their consciousness, allow it to move through them and uh, connect with the body's own healing system, which allows food to come in. And we have a whole elimination system, which takes the food out. But if there's too much fear, we can hold on. And that's what the wound is all about. So, yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, what you were saying about um, these various parts of us and the things that we're holding on to, again, during this, this time, during this period, we are forced to because we just don't have the same degree of distractions. I mean, things are opening up a little bit more for folks, but we don't have the same degree of distractions. Um, and so we are forced to uh, encounter these parts of ourselves. And we can look at it as, uh, you know, 
a, a positive and some people might feel like this is not a positive because we do want to be distracted. It's, it's work. First of all, it's inner work. And uh, a lot of times we run away from inner work. Um, some people were, I, I know, cause I've seen that in the past are used to um, having a lot of people over all the time. This way they deal very little with themselves. So here it is now, you're not able to have all these people around to distract you. Now you're faced to deal with yourself. Uh, and that can be a really, really great and powerful thing. So I think, you know, our conversation today is to show the power that can come from this moment. We got to flip the, the script, as they say. We have to flip it and make it work for us. There's two sides to every coin. And that's what we're talking about. How can we make this moment work for us. So we need to pause. That's the real opportunity. And you're so right. Having to go inward, I'm an external person. So this was really, you know, I had to sit there and go, wait a minute, it, it, it served an opportunity for me to find out about this unconscious part. Um, and it's funny, I'm not eating ice cream, not because either way, it would make me gain weight does make me feel tired. Um, but it yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but it doesn't make me gain weight. And I'm also a cruncher. Uh, I could relate to that. But I'm noticing that as I will seize this opportunity. So when it comes up, and something's bothering me, like, um, I don't like, and I know people will relate to this, I don't like uh, when my external world is not loving me, if they're not liking me, you know, um, I don't like not being liked. I don't like people's anger. I don't like so many things right. will disrupt my, uh, my inner well-being mm -hmm. and make me kind of nervous. So mm -hmm. when that happens, of course, that's the eater's cue. Mm -hmm. Gosh. I can't bear what's happening in the external world, just like you say. So I want to eat to sedate the nervousness. So what I'm doing now is I'm going, and it's a learning and a practice. I'm going, oh, okay, Patricia, we can eat. That's always there. We can go right there. We won't, won't gain food. We can always gain weight. I can go there. So I give myself that permission because it's going to happen anyway, you right. know, it's too intense. Right. So I go, okay. Um, we have that, we can do that, but I would like to now. So my adult self, my nurturing self, my wisdom self, my, uh, my functioning adult besides just my reactive self says to myself, okay, we can, we can do that. And, and, but here's what I would like to do with you. And I'm just talking to myself is I say, just for one minute, let's really look at how much pain we feel and let's have the courage and the compassion to feel uh, this discomfort okay, my outside world isn't loving me the way I would like it to love me. You know, I'm feeling afraid something bad will happen. Any of these things that make me want to eat. And I go, but it's, you know, let's feel it. Let's just feel it. So uh, I am allowing myself and uh, to feel uh, that. I know you're going to be okay. Yeah. I think that's a big part. It's like, okay, we're going to feel, but we're going to be okay when we're done. That's, thank you. Yeah. And I'm safe in the unknown. So Absolutely. That is one of my meditations. I am safe in the unknown. I'm faced when the external world is not feeling good and I don't have the answers and I feel anxious. I go back to a mantra. I am safe in the unknown because that's what we didn't feel. Well, what I'd like to do now is we're, we really are going to take a break. We're going to take a really 
quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about this some more uh, and I'm going to interject something else that I discovered with myself around food as well. So please stay tuned and we will be right back after this brief break. And we are back. Of course, you're tuned in to KPFK 90.7 FM in Southern California and streaming live at kpfk.org. You are tuned into the Expansion Zone with Sonia Barrett. That's me, of course, your host. And my guest today is Pat- Patricia Bish, who I'm having a wonderful conversation with. She is the author of Freedom from Food. And we're finding that there are so many layers and levels to um, this idea of food and eating and why we do certain things. So, Patricia, one of the things I wanted to share with you right now is, um, of course, you know, I, I over the years, it's been <laughs> years of, of really trying to nail freedom from food. And when you think you've nailed it and then you realize, oh, you haven't really nailed it because you've got some other thing going on in your head or mind that sort of makes you think that's what it is. And then you find out it's not that. All right. So I've gone through all these different (laughs) stages and levels of this. But right now where I am, and I can truly honestly say that is I have gone to a place where I am able to really notice that I am not hungry or I really don't want this thing. Like I'm really, I I don't want anything. And I started to realize how you may eat. um, You just, you eat just because. And so for me, it's, that's been a big thing. Now I no longer right now, I'm not working hard at that is anymore i'm not working hard at at noticing that i'm not hungry Uh, i just now know you can bring something up to me like um say for example ice cream there's one place that i love to to go to they make this amazing (laughs) vegan ice cream right and i'm not like a big ice cream fan but they make this incredible fried ice cream thing it's so good okay so now my other self would have been oh man that sounds good I want to get a piece. But the truth is, do I even really want that right now? And that's what I started to realize. It's like, you're going to eat it because you like it, but you honestly, your taste buds aren't even screaming for it. So I, you know, there's that, you know what I mean, Patricia, there's that moment where you really have a taste for something. So I'm, I've been allowing myself to eat as I truly am having a taste for something. Like I really, truly want it as opposed to the other way around. And so to me, that's been a, it's been a huge thing for me and it's made a big difference in my life at this time. Yeah. Well, I want to say that that is an advanced healing and what it says to me and what we're talking about is that you have healed that wound enough that we all have that you have a choice you are at a choice point to go, do I really want this? I, I, I really don't, uh, you know, which is true for most of the food we eat. Do I really want this? The fact is I really don't, you know, sometimes I'll just be eating chips or I, I have a friend who talked to me the other day and she talked about that she watches a food show on television And she gets up, she goes to her kitchen, and she has to make whatever they made Mm. on the food show. She said, "I it's as if she's hypnotized, like she just must have it. So that whole walk to the kitchen or that whole eating when you don't even want it is is actually uh, such a beautiful flashing light of your guidance self saying something else is going on, something else, please see me. So what I'm hearing from you is you've seen yourself enough. You've been working on yourself enough that you don't have to do that. Uh, You do not have to eat. I'm sure it's not all the time, you know, because most of us have our moments. But um, 
But you're yeah. no longer fighting that, though. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Where we're, I don't even know if it's fighting, but I think you no longer just surrender to um, this. Oh, let, let me eat this. And then you're, you, you really don't want it. So that, that's kind of what it is. It's, it's, for me, it's like just not really surrendering to this random thought. Um, just, you know, no, like you said, now if you waited a while and you're suddenly you're really having a taste for something. But I think to me, that was just a huge, huge realization is the fact that you, you don't really have a taste for this. You can bring something in that I like, but I don't really have a taste for that. Otherwise, before, this is something I like. Oh, my gosh, I like this. I'm going to eat it. Yeah, did you really have a taste for it right now? No, the fact is it's here. I need to eat it. So it's really an incredible moment of, of observation of self. Yes, these observations, these choice points. Um, you know, the choice points inform our body, which is part of the quantum world. And uh, so you are, you're, you have a choice point. And so you have... Um, been able to stop that kind of hypnotic habitual part of yourself that just you know where we're just eating chips and we don't even know we're eating feel awful afterwards this is the part there where you don't feel great or, or people beat themselves up afterwards and i get that it's like oh why did i even eat that i you know because i remember saying that it's like why did i even eat that i don't oh you're full you just feel like uh and you get to a place where you you don't want to really feel that anymore. You don't want to do that thing anymore, you know? And so it's like, okay, do I really want this? No, not really. That's yeah, but not. you're able to. I just want to say that that has to do with a, um, a whole lot of loving, healing part of yourself that's it's kind of like riding a bike you've just developed. And like you said, it, it's been a practice, you know, enough of your consciousness has uh, developed outside of the wound that you can do that. You can do that. Otherwise you would not be able to. That's why. I, I, yeah. I wasn't able to do it before. No. And it, and it wasn't like, that part, what I'm expressing, has been a long-standing part. I had to go through all these stages to get there, all these different changes and changes. And so when you were talking about the different stages, I think it's important for, for people to be reminded that every shift opens up the door for another shift. And, you know, every new awareness takes you to a, a new opportunity of this change because there's so many layers deep. And this is what I think is so fascinating that with fascinating with your work about food, because we don't realize just how significant a role it actually plays in our world, in our life, in cultures, you know, um, just all across the board. It's, it's huge. Yes. And, um, I agree. And it, it is stages and uh, uncovering different layers. And we have to um, uh, have a healthy respect for it because the our being that got wounded, um, uh, you know, covered over, had to cover over that amount of pain for a very good reason. And we're not going to just let go of that reason, you know, that uh, it held us together unless there's enough healing that's taken place, enough layers. And that's why I really encourage people um, to have a consultation. You know, this all happened because we didn't really have um, – the caretaking or the love that we needed. All eaters, there's some place where the love, the safety, 
we didn't really get it to the amount we needed it and no fault for our parents because they didn't get it either. You know, we don't have to blame anyone. We just have to realize that um, we, we need to get support that we need. We, uh, we've learned to be functioners, like actually so many eaters are caretakers for other people. It's very common. They call me up. They're taking care of everyone, but they didn't have someone to take care of them. And they're letting the food be the caretaker rather than the wisdom voice that says that teaches them another layer, another layer, um, a helpful that says, please be with me for a few seconds before you just sedate me. Please let me inform you of what my world was like. Mm, uh, powerful, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we're in such a diet-driven society that I think it really helps to cover over these things that you're talking about because we get to jump from one diet to the next. But in doing that, we don't really have to do a lot of this internal work that we're talking about because we're just looking for the next diet to um, to create this idea or ideal uh, uh, appearance or feeling that we want. So I think that's and and this is nothing against the various diets. I think that they they can all be fantastic. But if we can do this piece that we're talking about today, I think we'll see a big difference in even how in the outcome of even in even some of those diets. And some of it you probably just realize you no longer need. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. If we could, um, if we could just picture for a second the part of ourselves, like you could, if everyone could take a moment and just picture the part of yourself that might have felt unloved or might have had to go unconscious because the outside world was just too scary in some way, fearful, created too much anxiety. And just take a moment and tune into that part. And you can see if it was a younger part, which it, or it, or an innocent part in some way, if you can picture that innocence, like a puppy or a kitten, this, you know, uh, a little child that's so innocent and, um, and realize it felt so out of control. Now, the job of the parents or the caretakers was to protect us, to guide us, to make us feel loved, and make our environment feel safe for us. Well, our parents didn't really know how to do that that much. Theirs wasn't safe for them. And look what we're living in now. It's, you know, it, it's a pretty uh, scary time. People are wearing masks and all the kinds of things that are going on. Um, so... What, um, so we, it's an overwhelming time. Exactly. And, and so that little part feels out of control. It does. And this is where you look at, uh, anorexia, bulimia. It, it's like, it, it's so afraid and it so needs control that at a, in a certain way, that's why people reach outside of themselves. They don't look at their body's own natural healing system which is what I bring them back to, but they look at diets, but you know, there is a, a place where the diet makes them feel in control of their environment. Now it's not going to, it doesn't last because people can't stay with it very long, but it's like people are grasping to, ha to make their environment um, something that they can understand, something that they can control. But it, it really isn't doing that inner work to help that inner part find the control, the love inside. And it's... Uh, it's a lot of temporary fixes um, yeah. that happen. Now, now, Patricia, you talk about um, consultation and coaching. Can you give more information on how someone can work with you um, yeah. And even possibly, you know, what that might look like. But let's make sure that they get that information because this is 
this is deep people this is much bigger it, it's your whole everything <laughs> your whole life you know food is so much more yes well you know the level of fear and anxiety like i said is like you know it's like jumping off into a place we have wanted to avoid because it's it's scary it's unknown and uh we don't we went unconscious because it was too much so um the consultations uh i do and you can sign up for them on my website thefreedomfromfood.com but you can also work um you know with someone who can help you uh what i feel is that that part of us that was young or out of control um our nervous system really needs someone there with us and that's kind of what the consultations do um you know in conjunction with the quantum world i teach but what it does for that part that was really scared is i know that part i know that part because i am <laughs> that part um i know the fear because i have that fear so which means that i can hold someone's hand i'm not talking about it i can i know the amount of fear that causes an eater to disconnect so a consultation really um helps someone have the safety to speak about that fear that disconnection um and with someone presencing them with someone creating a safe environment for them um enough to begin that internal work for however long that takes uh but it's kind of uh like a a tooth that has decay <laughs> we need to take out some of the decay you know or we need to take out some of the fear i should say until there's a a healthy enough um ability to feel these things that are uncomfortable on the outside and um not have our circuits break i i'm liking that circuit breaking thing so uh be able to um yeah be with a person hold hold their hand because it's a it's an uncomfortable place or we wouldn't have left it you know we would not have uh had to go unconscious so it's really i think important to let ourselves have someone hold our hand right and and this is really um not just people who are thinking well they have a food issue i think that we all have a relationship with food and i think we just need to ex- examine um take a truthful look at what that relationship is uh with food so so it doesn't matter if you're you know thinking you're overweight or you have um you know weight weight problems you're constantly balancing your weight i think it's a everybody opportunity to really look and see what is my relationship with food um and you know maybe you didn't have a damaged childhood or anything i mean my childhood was for the most part considered um fine um but at the same time along the way i picked up some baggage <laughs> i picked up some things <laughs> so so it's that it's that realization as as far as what patricia is talking about so i think it's just overall everybody's relationship with a food some people don't like food at all and i think even that patricia if you are somebody that ah i just eat because i got to eat then i think we need you need to even examine that because there is something there where you have this relationship with disliking the the idea of eating disliking what's feeding you disliking yes. what's nourishing you you know yes there are so many aspects but i think if we i think people want to get rid of something you know give me a shot give me a pill i want to get rid of it so if we can just slow that down and go wait a minute i'm wanting to get rid of the the most pure innocent loving divine essential part of myself that had to just got circuit circuit breaked 
<laughs> I guess that's however you say it, not that way. But, um, and okay, I want to join, I want to rejoin. You know, we're all unfolding and finding our, I'm going to call it our divine self. We're all on that part to find out the missing link. And I think we didn't know the missing link because it got short circuited. It was too painful. So anyway, I'm finding yeah. this opportunity is an opportunity to turn the breaker back on small bits at a time and say, realize, Oh, I can handle it with the help of someone else. Oh, I, I can handle this. Oh, I can go through this fearful part. Oh, I, I really understand why you want to eat right now. I, what was curious to me is I knew it, I was eating because I was uncomfortable, but I really hadn't put together how uncomfortable I was. The more I let myself really go, and it's kind of this conversation, oh, oh, that, that really scared you, or oh, you are that uncomfortable with people on the outside being angry at you, even if you're not angry at them, or these things, you are that uncomfortable that you want to get out of here, you want to eat it away. And so just me beginning to have the curiosity even of how uncomfortable these things have made us and just hanging out in that curiosity before I shut it down, presencing it a little more, getting help where I need help to presence it more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because yes, we, we are left pretty disjointed and, um, you know, it's like that word, you know, remembering and, and <laughs> remembering ourselves back together uh, and being okay as we move through it. We only have um, about a minute or so left, but uh, Patricia, what, any final words that you would just like to, you know, impart Yes, I would. God, I find myself tearing up just thinking of the words. Because the truth is, we are incredible, incredible beings of light. We are totally love. We are love. We are lovable. Um, and we are beautiful beyond our, beyond our understanding and our knowing. And it's time to uh, remember and allow ourselves to reclaim the beauty, the uh, strength, the, uh, the love that we are. We're radiant beings of light and love. And uh, it's, time to, it's time to have the courage to uh, find our way back to embodying who we really are. Absolutely. And it's true. And that's, that's, this, these are the ways in which we do it. There's many different ways, but there, these are the ways in which we do it. Well, however it shows up for us um, and it presents itself, that's what we need to be able to begin to work on. We don't have to go searching for what it is. I think it presents itself to us all the time. And that's what you're saying is take that moment to see that minute or, you know, in that minute, give it that time that is needed. So fantastic. Well, I want to thank you so much, Patricia. It's always such a pleasure chatting with you. And um, I know my audience loves you as well. So once again, it's freedomfromfood.com. That's the website, right? And, uh, and so you can uh, tune in there, go check it out and see what you can do with working with Patricia. All right. Well, again, thank you, Patricia Bish. Thanks to my listening audience uh, for always tuning in. Thanks to our engineer, D'Angelo Jones. And also, please visit TheExpansionZone.com for the archive uh, of this show and all the other shows that uh, you know I've done. And subscribe to our newsletter on the website as well. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, we also post it on, on YouTube as well. But uh, subscribe and Instagram 
and you know on facebook all that other great stuff ah and of course to find out more about me do visit the real barrett.com and as always i like to remind you to live life to its fullest and question everything until next time see you then everybody's talking about consciousness everybody wants that eternal kiss Follow them.